In this example, we are interested in the relation between the input voltage and the output current, which you consider to be the current through the secondary loop here. We are looking for the transfer function I2 of S divided by V of S. To find this transfer function, we first need to relate I2 to V, and that can be done by applying Kirchhoff's law to both loops, create two expressions, the first one that relates I1 and V, and the second one that relates I1 and I2, and then combine them to find the relation between I2 and V. Starting with the first loop, we know that the voltage V is equal to the voltage drop across R and L. We can now formulate this relation directly in the frequency domain as V of S, which is V of T in the frequency domain, equals to the voltage drop across R. I of T becomes I1 of S times R plus the voltage drop across the inductor, that is the inductance times the derivative of the current. The current in this case is I1 of S minus I2 of S. And you notice S here, S represents the derivative in the frequency domain. So the inductance times the derivative of the net current. We can now factor I1 of S in this equation and rewrite it as V of S equals to I1 of S times Ls plus R minus I2 of S times Ls. For the second loop, let's start with the resistor. The voltage across the resistor is R times I2 of S. The voltage drop across the capacitor is 1 over C times the integral of I2. The integral in the frequency domain is 1 over S. So 1 over Cs, integral of I2 of S. Again, 1 over S represents the integral of I2. And plus the voltage drop across the inductor again. So plus L S, the derivative of the current. I2 of S minus I1 of S. And this is equal to zero. We can now factor I2 and move I1 to the right side of the equation. I2 of S multiplies R plus LS plus one over CS. And this is equal to I1, becomes positive when it goes to the right, times Ls. Since we are interested in the relation between I2 and V of S, we can isolate I1 here and replace in the first equation. The expression for I1 of S is this side of the equation divided by Ls. That is I2 of S times L divided by Ls plus 1 plus 1 over Cls squared. Having obtained the two expressions, we can now replace I1 in the first expression and relate I2 to V directly. So if I1 is replaced there, the first expression rewrites as V of S equals to I2 times L over Ls plus 1 plus 1 over Lcs squared times Ls plus R minus I2 Ls since I2 multiplies both terms of this equation, we can divide Vs by I2 or divide both sides of the equation by I2. That gives V of S divided by I2 equals to this, the remaining of this equation now can be written with a common denominator. The common denominator here for all terms 
is LC S squared. LC S squared divided by LS is CS times R, RCS plus LC S squared plus 1. Multiplied, of course, by LS plus R. LCS squared divided by 1 is LCS squared times LS gives L squared CS to the power of 3. The transfer function is defined by the output divided by the input, which means that this expression needs to be inverted. We can rewrite it as I2 of S over V of S equals to LCS squared divided by the multiplication of these two terms minus the last one. Expanding this gives this long expression. We see that this two, these terms to the power of 3 will cancel. And you can further simplify this expression, I2 of S over V of S equals to LCS squared. Starting with the power of two terms, you have 2RCLS squared. And now we can factor all terms with S plus R squared C plus L times S plus R. And this is now the transfer function between the output I2 and the input V of S. Now let's go one step ahead and assume, for instance, that instead of I2, we were interested in the voltage across the capacitor as the output of the system. Let's say VC. Here we have I2. So this expression gives I2 provided that a V of S is applied to the system. If you want to go from this to VC, what would be the, the, the procedure here? Thinking about this as the current, to go from the current to the voltage, we would need to integrate the current and divide that by C, which means that if we multiply this expression here by 1 over CS, we are taking the integral of this expression and dividing that by C, which means that now I2 becomes VC. And it would go from the current to the capacitor voltage. 